Bill Bedford here, and today I'm with Ramiz Halu, the sales doctor. Ramiz, how are you going, my friend? I'm fine. How are you, Phil? Really great to see you. <laughs> now, I've heard you've got uh, some really key, or at least one, really powerful sales tip from your arsenal of many tips. Right. You know, the, the one concept that um, makes a huge difference is, is who are you talking to? with who are you talking to inside of the buying organization. So one of the things that you got to be talking with is the people that, ha that have the authority, that have the motivation and the ability to influence the sale in your favor. And I'll share with you a quick story. I was with a representative in one of the markets in the GCC. We walked in. I was doing a field coaching visit, so I go in. And we sat in the, direct, the, in the director of purchasing uh, office. So the rep did a very simple transaction where she needed to get the, um, you know, the trade license and some of the uh, trade uh, certain documents for legality purposes. And the end of the conversation, it goes like, well, great. Uh, if you can go ahead and send us your price list on all the different products and services that, well, mainly it was products, uh, we're always looking for ways to save money. And if you have something that's good, we'd love to, to try you out. The guy was excited and he stood up and he was moving out of the office. So on the way out, uh, he was stepped out almost. I had to interrupt him and say, can you just ask a quick question? The director was kind. He goes, yes, sure. I said, well, you know, given the current growth within the, um, it was uh, the food business, the, the QSR business in your, in your area. Uh, I said, well, what are the, you know, we're seeing, you know, new, new um, QSRs, restaurants opening up left and right. What are your plans as a company to um, retain your customers, to possibly attract new ones to your outlet and uh, grow your average spend inside of the outlet? He looked at me and he goes, well, that's a very interesting question. And this would not be my department. This would be the, uh, the marketing department and the sales department. And then I said, well, who in the sales or marketing department uh, we, you know, would be responsible? And he goes, it's Mr. So-and-so. I look at the sales rep. I said, well, are you in touch with Mr. So-and-so? He said, no. I said, well, is it okay if you can make an introduction to Mr. So-and-so for the rep? He goes, no, absolutely. We are always looking for such ideas. And uh, this could be a great way of knowing what you guys can do. So just imagine the amount of time that this gentleman and this business have been, let's say, wasting by knocking on the wrong tree. Now, yes, the purchasing director will give the order. But when it's, let's say, a food item, when it's a trend, when it's innovations, when it's certain value-added things where it's no longer just a product, it's actually the value, it's what the product does. Mm. So when I do an innovation for, let's say, a menu, you know, and I help a certain restaurant take advantage of a, of a certain demographics within the area. Uh, like we know today, spicy food is something people like or a healthy trend, whether it's on the organic, gluten-free and all these things. So anytime I have certain ideas, of course, the purchasing department will have limitations to what they can introduce, yet it's the business on the other side that will make that decision. So I'll tell you the simple, the simple concept is goes with with what you do at the Referral Institute. So one of the things that I've learned with you, of course, is to get uh, that credibility. So build credibility with a person to recommend you. Mm. Absolutely. You know, if that relationship isn't strong between the purchasing and that salesman, he wouldn't want to pass him over. But if yeah. that engagement yeah. is there. So maybe I can just say if you can give one or two quick ideas of how do you build credibility, Phil, with people? What's the one or two things that qu come to mind quickly to help people Absolutely. build that confidence? Well, I think, funnily enough, it's actually one of the things that stood out about you mm -hmm. uh, as a sales trainer to me, was the fact I think people think as a salesperson you've just got to beat people over the head until they buy. You know, that kind of old si si side of selling that often puts people away from the whole selling. Um, and what I love about the way you do it and the way you train is it's so conversational. And it's about asking questions. Now, the interesting thing is when we ask other people about them, right, well, number one, you're gathering information, but that person is hearing you have genuine interest in them and their problems, whether that's business problems or even personally 
personal needs, personal needs yeah. which is often the biggest, bigger motivator of the two. So as you're asking questions about this other person, they're actually thinking, what a nice guy. Mm. He's really interested in me. And you are genuinely interested. But this is one of the places where people go wrong. They think to be a good networker, they've got to do lots of talking. And they need to be talking, talking, talking. And one of the biggest tips about networking, and I'm sure it's the same in sales, is we've got two ears and one mouth. And we should use them. In that proportion. In that proportion. <laughs> Absolutely. So that would be one, one key tip, really, is to, is to always ask questions about the other person, show genuine interest in them. And that's a great way to start a relationship. Absolutely. And, and I think this is a great way of concluding the segment. So uh, I guess until, uh, until next time, sell more, sell faster and profitably. Thanks, Phil. Pleasure. Wonderful. Thank you.